In this video, I'm going to talk about factoring. But to start factoring, I'm first of all actually going to go backwards and take a look at just multiplying binomials. So if I'm multiplying binomials, for instance, x plus 3 times 2x minus 1, I'm going to make a generic rectangle for that and multiply that out. Now when I make my generic rectangles, I try to stay really consistent. So I take one of them here, my x plus 3, and place it on the side. And the other one I always put on the bottom, 2x minus 1. Now they could switch, and I could put the x plus 3 on this side, and I could put the 2x minus 1 on this side. It doesn't matter. I could also take the x plus 3 and move it on that. Or the 2x plus 1, I could put it on the top. But just for consistency's sake, I'm going to set it up like this. So, when I start multiplying them, in this box right here, I have x times 2x. That is going to be a 2x squared. The top box up here, I'm going to get 3 times 2x is 6x. This box here, I'm going to have x times negative 1 for a negative x. And then the last box right there is 1, negative 1 times 3 for a negative 3. So now when I want to write this as a sum I have my 2x squared. I have my like terms right here. 6x and negative x is going to be a positive 5x, and then minus 3. So now if we think about factoring, we are actually going to be starting with something like this. So for instance, a different problem. If I had 2x squared minus 7x minus 15, and I want to write that as two sets of binomials multiplied together. So, I first of all want to go back to my generic rectangle. When we did the generic rectangle before, my x squared term, whichever that was, I always put in the same box. It was always right here. So that is a 2x squared. My last term, which is called the constant term, does not have any x's. That always went right here. So that's my minus 15. My middle term, or my x term, these two added up to equal that. So when I combine like terms, those two have to add to be negative 7x. So now, I pause on this for one minute, and I set up a second side problem to figure out what goes in those remaining boxes. And that's where our diamond problems come in. So now if I set up a diamond problem, I multiply these two together, and that goes on top, because these also multiply to be the same thing. So both of those diagonals are going to multiply to equal a negative 30x squared. But I also know that these add to be that. So the bottom of my diamond problem is negative 7x. So now I'm looking for the two things that multiply to this but add to this. That is going to be a negative 10x and a positive 3x. That is what goes in these remaining boxes. So a negative 10x and a positive 3x. They could be flipped and you could put the 3x in that box and the 10x, negative 10x in that box. It does not matter. But now again, just to stay, con stay consistent, I always look at these two and think of what is my greatest common factor. What can I divide out of both of those terms? And in this case, it is just x. Then once I have that, x times whatever belongs here gives me my 2x squared. And that is a 2x. And x times this will give me 3x, so that is a plus 3, and 2x times this will give me my negative 10x, and that is a negative 5. One last check, 
this times this should always equal that box, and negative 5 and positive 3 do equal negative 15, so everything is working out well. So now, I started off with my 2x squared minus 7x minus 15, and in factored form, that is going to equal x minus 5 times 2x plus 3.